Hi everyone, today is the second part of the lesson on circles. Today we're going to review the circles two formulas and we're going to be learning first how to find the equation of the circle given three points and then second talk about the parametric forms of the equation of a circle. Just to let you know you will need your graphing calculator for this lesson so if you don't have it you may want to pause and go get it real quickly. First to review there were two forms of the equation of a circle. The first form was the graphing form, x minus h the quantity squared, plus y minus k the quantity squared equals r squared. This form allows us to graph a circle. The center, remember, is h and k. And remember about insiders lying. The numbers that are in the brackets are the opposite of the ones that you need. The radius is r. It is the square root of the number on the other side of the problem. General form is the one we're going to need to work with while we do the finding equation. And the general form is x squared plus y squared plus capital DX plus capital EY plus capital F equals zero. There are usually an a and a c in front of the x squared and y squared, but in this case, a and c are both equal to 1. Now we're going to look at the first new topic in this lesson, which is to find the equation of a circle given three points on the circle. In order to write the equation of certain things, you have to have a certain number of points. In order to write the equation of a line, you need two points. And usually with any other curve, you need at least three points to find the equation. So our first example is going to give these three points. The point 4 comma 1, the point 5 comma negative 6, and the point negative 4, negative 3. Now all of these points are on the outside of the circle. If you know the center, all you need is one other point to find the equation. But if you don't know the center, you need three points. So I'm going to write the steps down in red so that we remember how we're doing this in the future. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to plug the points into the general form, one at a time. And you're going to clean your equations up. So the first point we're going to plug in is the 4 comma 1. Remember that 4 is x and 1 is y. So in the general form, we're going to substitute those numbers in. So we're going to have 4 squared plus 1 squared plus d times 4 plus e times 1 plus f equals 0. Now, we're going to go and review and use what we learned on systems of equations to do this problem. We need to turn this equation into an equation that has d, e, and f on one side and any constants on the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is combine these two together. That will be 17 plus 4d plus 1e plus f equals 0. The 1 is not necessary, of course. But now I'm going to take that and rearrange it and put 4d plus e plus f equals negative 17. Do the same thing with the other two points. The second point is 5, negative 6. So we're going to have 5 squared plus bracket negative 6 squared. Make sure you put it in a bracket. D times 5. E times negative 6 plus F equals 0. 5 squared plus negative 6 squared you can put into your calculator. That is 61 plus 5D minus 6E plus f equals 0. Rearrange this one. You get 5d minus 6e plus f equals negative 61. Now finally, do the same thing with the last point, negative 4, negative 3. Remember your brackets and the squares go on the outside. Negative 4 squared plus negative 3 squared plus d times negative 4 plus e times negative 3 plus f equals 0. Negative 4 squared plus negative 3 squared is 25. Minus 4d minus 3e plus f equals 0. Rearranging this one, 
is negative 4d minus 3e plus f equals negative 25. So now I have my three equations with three variables that I'm going to need to solve in the calculator. So step two is to put the equations into the calculator and solve for d, e, and f. And those values will look in your calculator like x, y, and z, but they're really not because our equation is written in terms of d, e, and f. They will be d, e, and f. So I want you to take a minute. I want you to pause the video. I want you to, as a refresher, I want you to put those into the calculator and come up with your answers for d, e, and f. They should come out to be positive and negative non-decimals. So do that real quickly. When you're done, come back and see if you got the same answers that I did. Now, here are the answers that I got from the calculator. d equals negative 2, e equals 6, f equals negative 15. So, after we found our, t our th answers, we are going to write the general form equation that we just found. So, in reality, we have found the equation of a circle. It's a general form equation, but it is an equation. So, it will be x squared plus y squared minus 2x plus 6y minus 15 equals 0. If that's all they want, if they just say write the equation of a circle, you're done. But usually they'll ask you to go on and find the center and the radius. So step four, if necessary, is to complete the square to find the center and the radius. And we did this in the first circles video. So we put the x squared minus 2x plus blank together in a bracket, same with the y's, y squared plus 6y plus blank equals 15 plus blank plus blank, running out of room. So complete the square. The two numbers in the bracket will be minus 1 and minus 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, goes in the blank, which makes our first term x minus 1, the quantity squared y and y. Since I have 6, it will split into 3 and 3. In the blank goes 9. 9 goes in the other, on the other side. So this will be y plus 3, the quantity squared. Adding up the terms on the right, we get 25. So now we know that our center is the point positive 1, negative 3, and the radius is the square root of 25, which is 5. So we have completed what we needed to do for this problem. So these are the steps you must go through in order to find the equation of a circle given three points. Part two of this lesson is writing parametric equations for the circle. Okay, Parametric equations are equations that are in terms of a third variable. In this case, the parameter is time. This parameter allows us to graph a circle even though it's not a function and it allows us to solve some things that we are going to need later on in calculus as well. So the two, the formulas, what happens is you end up getting two equations. One that is x in terms of t and the other is y in terms of t. The formula is x equals h plus r cosine of t and y equals k plus r sine of t. Now the two equations comprise one formula. You must write both when you write parametric equations. You will always have an x equals equation and a y equals equation. So let me do an example of this. We're going to write the parametric form for the previous answer. So if you're still on the same piece of paper, you can see that previous answer. If you can't, I'll go ahead and write it down here. x minus 1, the quantity squared, plus y plus 3, the quantity squared, equals 25. So the, th the three variables that you're going to need to identify are h, k, and r. Those are the three ones that you need. So h here is positive 1, k is negative 3, and r is going to be positive 5. So now when we write our answer, we're going to have an x equals equation and a y equals equation. Following the model above, it will be 1 plus 5 cosine of t and then it will be negative 3 plus 5 
sine of t, and that's your answer. Write the equation of the circle, going from parametric to Cartesian is what we call the other. So the original problem here is going to be x equals 6 cosine of t minus 3. y is going to be 6 sine of t plus 7. So what we have to do now is what we did before. Pull h, k, and r out of here, and then we can write our equation based on the formula. However, both of these are in reverse order. Notice that the, the number in front of cosine and sine is your r, so I know r first. r is 6. h is always in the x equation, which in this case is negative 3. k is in the y equation, which is positive 7. And so now I can write my equation here. Remember to change your sign. x plus 3, the quantity squared, plus y minus 7, the quantity squared, equals 6 squared, which is 36. And there's your equation for the circle. All right, this assignment does not show up in the Delta book. Everybody must do the Griffith book today. Now, since the Griffith material is online in the classroom, if you don't have your own personal copy, you can use the one that's online. So this is KG only today. This is section 1.2, which is on page 8, and you can do either the odds or the evens. It does not matter. Do a sampling of all of these so that you know how to do it, especially the ones that you must put in the calculator. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions.